morning, but a day. Flaming June. We're gathering the first mountain for shearing. We're in Dugalolchi down there. The mountain's called Moy This is the Jubilee Path. Two dogs this morning. Yes, and Max. And um, it's cold, isn't it? Can't believe I don't think I've ever gathered in June with a coat on. Usually it's boiling hot. It's, it's good to, to get the sheep in, but again, it's difficult. You know, farming all depends on the weather, seasons. So the warm weather helps get the grease off the sheep, get the wool to rise, and for them to shear easier. And I went to my polytunnel this morning and I noticed that half my bloody cucumbers had died. I'm looking in the garden and there's a lot of yellow taint on the veg, which shows, you know, it's the cold weather. So producing food, farming, can be difficult if the weather and the seasons aren't with us. So we have to protect the way that we produce our food. And one of them things is livestock. Livestock can thrive in all weathers. And um, we can see up here today, mosaics of different habitats. This mountain's been grazed. This area burned a few years ago. This whole mountain was alight. And it's come back. It has healed itself. You see there's a few little trees poking up there, here, there and everywhere. But it's still being grazed. I think it's important that we utilise these uplands in the best way and some of the best ways to graze them is with livestock, especially sheep. So when people say sheep wreck mountains, what planet do they live in? Yeah, it has to be balanced, and there has been problems with overgrazing. I think the biggest problem we have in Wales at the moment is undergrazing. So many sheep are coming off the upland, and the land's not being grazed enough. We are gonna have problems with wildfires maybe not this summer because <laughs> it's wet and flipping freezing but you know this in the dry summer it can be a tinderbox so it's important that we graze it or cut swathes in it to make sure that we've got fire breaks just manage the land properly but you have to manage the land properly with the people that understand it that know what to do with it and um, i think that is farmers and the farmers that have been living off that land for generations we need to protect them and uh, stop all this fucking bullshit and blaming farmers for this so-called climate crisis yeah coats and uh, i don't know where the global warming bits coming in but fucking hell it's cold <laughs> you know you can make your own mind up is it cows and sheep that are causing Oh shit, the problems. I've got to watch where I'm going. Or is it mankind themselves? Eight billion people on God's earth spewing out all kinds of shite into the atmosphere. I don't know. Look at China. Look at India. They're all developing countries. They don't seem to be slowing down on anything. We are in this country 1% of the whole carbon emissions if we fell in the sea tomorrow and make an iota of a difference so yeah make your own mind up protect the farmers follow a farmer get behind them give them a fair price for what they're producing because you are going to need one once twice or three times a day and all this shit that's going on with these politicians man it's unbelievable they're promising the earth but one thing i haven't heard of is Anybody talking about agriculture, food security in the UK? Not one of the manifestos has mentioned it. Not one of the policies or the parties I've heard has mentioned it. So I'd like to hear from these politicians, from these so-called experts who are going to save 
humanity. <laughs> How are they going to feed the nation affordably, sustainably in the UK? Anyway, a little soapbox this morning. Living the dream. See you soon.